I think okay. I now think that was the very signal. serious. Yes. Okay, one more minute and then we can start. It will be on the hour. All right. Or half hour. Whatever the boss says. <laughs> You're the boss. I'm just the helper. Okay. Welcome to the master lecture. And I am Carl Jones, senior lecturer at the University of Westminster here in the United Kingdom in London. And I am pleased to welcome our two speakers for today. The first one is Dr. Everpides Santides, and he's a professor of graphic and visual communication at the Department of Multimedia and Graphic Arts of the University of Cyprus of Technology. He is also the founder and director at the Semiotics and Visual Communication Lab at the Cyprus University of Technology. And he'll be presenting with Dr. Sonia Andreu, who is an associate lecturer at the School of Business and Management at the University of Central Lancashire of Cyprus, where she teaches advertising and marketing. And she's also a member of the Semiotics and Visual Communication Lab of the Cyprus University of Technology. And they both will be speaking on social change and the semiotics of the 2004 referendum advertisements in the Republic of Cyprus. Okay, welcome and thank you very much and please start. So um, we would firstly like to thank and congratulate the organizers of the third international conference, Semiosis in Communication, Culture, Communication and Social Change for this amazing initiative, the excellent organization and obviously the hospitality. The lecture is entitled Social Change and the Semiotics of the 2004 Referendum Advertisement in the Republic of Cyprus. Open second. Uh, let us begin by providing a context for the presented study. The referendum mentioned on the title attempted to solve the Cyprus dispute, which is the ongoing political and social conflict taking place predominantly between the uh, major communities residing on Cyprus, this being the Greek Cypriot community and Turkish Cypriot community. The issue gained its current form or rather status quo following the 1974 Turkish military invasion and occupation of the northern side of the island, as well as the displacement of thousands of citizens resulting from uh, these acts. Um, and this is according to the UN Security Council Resolution 541 and UN Security Council Resolution 550. In the course of the intervening 47 years, there have been several attempts at reconciliation and reunification of the island. The most prominent among them is the Cyprus Reunification Plan, also known as the Annan Plan, owning to the Secretary General of the United Nations of the time, that was Kofi Annan. The plan was to be put through in two parallel referendums taking place in the areas controlled by the Republic of Cyprus, as well as on the Turkish Cypriot side on the 24th of April 2004. It is interesting to note that this period coincided with uh, the induction of Cyprus in the European Union, which happened on the 1st of May 2004. So the uh, question that was presented to the electorate of both communities has been the following. Do you approve the foundation agreement with all its annexes as well as the constitution of the Greek Cypriot and Turkish Cypriot state and the provisions as to the laws to be enforced to bring into being a new state of affairs in which Cyprus joins the European Union united? So, and here you can also see just for context uh, the proposal for a new flag, which would be part of a new visual identity of the new state. Considering um, this reunification uh, plan and the crucial question posed to the citizens, our presentation investigates the advertising rhetoric of different campaigns published prior to the referendum. Obviously, 
we can place them under two major categories, where one of them supported the proposal set by the plan, thus voting yes, and the other group of campaigns opposed it, thus voting no. In more detail, we are aiming to extract the values and ideological meanings assigned to advertisements that were also appearing uh, and circulated in the form of billboards during that time and critically interpret the findings considering the historical background as well as the socio-political changes that were taking place on the island during that time. It should be noted that these advertisements circulated in the Republic of Cyprus and not on the northern side of the island. Um, as a broader theoretical framework for this study, we are considering the idea, the notion of um, social change, which uh, can be triggered, as we very well know, by various heterogeneous reasons. This could be demographic shifts, biological, cultural, psychological factors, as well as any technological innovations or even environmental alterations, which all of these could be potent catalysts for a social change to take place. In this sense, the concept of social change refers to any distinct, significant, and profound alteration in the established patterns of social behavior, values, relations, as well as structures that make up a society. So social change can originate or be triggered both by external or internal factors. Furthermore, social change can occur through a planned, organized, or institutionalized event or an, or an unplanned event. For a social change and its consequences to be widely understood, sufficient time usually is needed in order to comprehend the motives behind them as well as its scale. On the other hand, uh, we should consider the likelihood of change resistance. This usually occurs when people located within the societies in question uh, feel threatened by the potential changes, as well as the resulting consequences on their environment and obviously their immediate lives. The following literature review we conducted so to report on papers that discussed expressions of visual communication in relation to or in the service of social changes that affected a larger part of a population in the respective contexts uh, we studied and obviously had an official or institutional origin. We are starting this review with uh, works that address the ways in which uh, visual communication aided in the expression of protesting voices following or in the midst of occurring social changes. Venedi 2017 sought to address the aesthetics and purpose uh, of photojournalistic photographs of protests in Greece through empirical data, more specifically in-depth interviews with Greek photojournalists and obviously the corpus that they produced. Uh, the article argues that the images captured by uh, Greek photojournalists during protests could be considered a hybrid of artistic practices, personal aesthetics, and the need to depict the events as objectively as possible. The way meaning is constructed through these images was further analyzed uh, during these in-depth interviews uh, with the use of various semiotic resources. For example, they discussed the usage of black and white film, the lightning techniques, the visual metaphors, color contrasts, and so on. The relationship between protests and um, the portray their portrayal in the uh, media, in particular, the coverage of the Standing Rock protests in 2016 and 2017 was discussed by Walker and Walter through ethnographic content analysis. The Standing Rock protests occurred in order to oppose the construction of the Dakota Access Oil Pipeline in the Northern uh, United States of America, running near the Standing Rock Native American Reservation. The, uh, obviously the construction was seen as uh, a direct threat to the cultural side and the indigenous population 
and obviously its historic significance. The paper sought to explore the way in which the protest was uh, represented through the use of imagery, visual metaphors, and even language in two seemingly opposing media, Fox News and the New York Times. So, um, and we see a contrasting uh, form of representation. While New York Times depicted more often than not the protesters as carriers of a long standing tradition, uh, as peaceful protesters, um, and even as victims at times, the Fox, um, the Fox News uh, usually depicted them as, uh, as almost as rioting uh, protesters. Although at times they uh, attempted to mitigate this uh, view by showcasing them in a more positive light. A different approach to analysis has been adopted by Phillips, where the author argued that protest and social movement material, while extensively studied, have not been given a definitive visual analytic procedure to fit its nature and purpose. The study took into consideration uh, protest material photographs taken during the anti hard four uh, demonstrations in Germany in 2004. The protests dealt with uh, reforms that would result in significant reductions of social welfare benefits. The author followed the content analysis of the verbal messages displayed on the objects and then a two-step visual analysis based on the idea of first impression analysis. Following the combination of methods, uh, Phillips analyzed the material gathered, taking into consideration parameters such as the uh, content of the message, the layout, the size of the protest material, the design, the visibility, and the organization that the protesters represented. Um, at the end of the day, he concluded that, um, and following the method that I just mentioned, that these protesters could be split into two distinctive categories. Uh, the first one could be characterized as professionals, quote unquote, uh, protesters who experienced the demonstrations as an alternative condition to a political group, thus participating and creating visual material that truly re reflects the particular group while the second ones were more spontaneous um, group of protesters that obviously their visual material, visual protesting material reflected this idea of spontaneity and not what Phillips called professional protesting, quote unquote. And let's move on now to a second group of um, studies where we are looking at papers which discussed how visual communication is being uh, utilized in the service of social change or for social change. Um, so the first one discusses the social changes that occur to globalization, modernization of societies, and obviously the idea of large migrations to city centers um, through the topic of children literature and the covers of children literature books. Uh, the author provided examples of different um, children books, uh, which were published after the, um, after the Right to Education Act, which is a legislation voted in 2009 in India, where uh, it made the education compulsory for all children, regard regardless of their gender, uh, under the age of 14. So Perry argued how these books strove to explain these new themes to children while introducing consciously more female heroines and attempting to counter the traditional roles assigned to boys, which were considered always to be more tough and overachieving, uh, while traditionally girls would be depicted as weak or dull. Um, another, another, uh, another article that could be placed under the, under the category that I just mentioned is uh, the article by Buko and all in 2018, where it follows the reaction of citizens to the Brexit referendum results announcements by conducting a content analysis on posts 
collected on the social media platform Flickr. The author sought to uncover the different practices adopted by citizens' multimodal practices in particular in order to visually express themselves in the midst of this huge social change. The study offered uh, different insights on the topic. Firstly, it looks like individuals seem to have been expressing their personal points of view through this, uh, this imagery. Uh, for example, their emotions, their fears, their hopes for the outcome, their own personal mm -hmm. thoughts. Um, and this uh, imagery was more anchored towards daily life, personal accounts, rather than any form of activist, um, activist sort of movement. The corpus also predominantly involved emotionally loaded texts and visual texts in where declarative and emotional content prevails over any sort of deliberate content or any type of post that might have an actual artistic creativity. And the final paper that we are gonna be looking at in this uh, literature review is um, the particular one by Yuri Shova in 2020, um, which deals with the crucial role of visual communication and in particular graphic design uh, under the utilization of uh, an official government, that being the official government of New Zealand during times of crisis and in particular during the COVID-19 pandemic. So um, the particular campaign was um, that the article studies was uh, created in order to uh, announce different regulations by the government of New Zealand to the citizens related to COVID-19. The article analyzes colors and the typeface choice, which have been specifically um, uh, chosen for the particular campaigns. According to the article, the designers aim to use colors that would be visually strong, uh, while at the same time uh, showcasing the state of emergency, but at the same time remaining uh, both clear and humane. And this is something that can be seen also by the typeface, uh, the colorations, uh, and also the way that the particular campaigns have been structured in terms of and perhaps um, this is the one study that reminds us more in terms of, uh, in terms of the structure. Uh, it reminds us more of, the, of our own uh, study on the 2004 um, Anand Plan campaign. And uh, concluding this uh, literature review, we are going to be moving on to the corpus of our own study. And I will be handing over the proverbial podium to uh, Professor Evripidis Zandidis. Thank you very much, Sonia. Um, allow me to share my screen. Um, I think, Sonia, you need to stop sharing your screen. Thank you. Um, just a minute to um, take it from where Sonia left. Uh, we are introducing our corpus here, which consists of selected advertisements that were published in the Cypriot press during and before the 24th of April 2004 referendum. The advertisements were drawn through open access from the newspaper and magazine archives of the Press and Information Office in Cyprus, which we were always thankful for their access to the archives of, uh, of the press in, in the Republic. And the selected advertisements were published in the Republic of Cyprus and not in the press of the occupied areas. Our semiotic analysis is using a compiled semiotic model that was developed as a working tool for the extraction of ideological meanings in printed graphic design applications. In the current research, it examines separately as well as in combination, the verbal and non-verbal signs of the advertisements. Both categories are explored through nine specific parameters, which relate to the semiotic dimensions of the signs, both from a micro and macro semiotic perspective. 
In respect of the verbal signs, these dimensions are mainly typographical. We list for the non-verbal representational. Their connoted interpretations are depicted and in combination with the rest of the related elements, ideological or mythical meanings are revealed. And we're gonna see this application in the corpus later on. To investigate the semiotics of the advertisements, we have separated our corpus in two categories. The ones that were promoting a positive vote yes, and the ones that were promoting a negative vote no to the plan. In our first examples that promote the voting of yes to the Anand plan, we observe a series of cultural characteristics that often represent the values of the local people in the Republic of Cyprus. Specifically, in all three advertisements, an oversized bold yes in lowercase letter is placed to cover most of the map area of Cyprus. While this emphasized placement promotes the unification of the island, it also becomes the major message of the advertisement as well as a strong sign of optimism on a Cypriot map that is no longer divided in half. We also observe that within a very conscious proximity underneath this emphasized yes, there are subheadings written in a white lowercase letters and placed in black rectangular blocks. This particular graphic representation of language that alludes to labeling and memo stickers relate, relates to the main title yes in three different ways. Yes to the return of our churches, yes for our children, and yes to the return of refugees in the third example. We observe that the prefix our in front of the word churches and children is a common linguistic technique to slogans in Cyprus. For example, in respect of national, <clears throat> excuse me, in respect of national products, we would also come across slogans such as our beer or our juice, a notion that builds on the concept of collectivity. This attitude, this attitude, we even practice it on our daily routines, often saying to me to have our coffee or eat our lunch. Moreover, it is worth noticing that these linguistic subheadings are also visualized with a series of churches, a smiling, welcoming young boy, and the Photoshop background of occupied areas at the front of an old lady walking in the role of a refugee. These images can only portray and contribute to the linguistic messages of the advertisement notions of faith and religion, family values, as well as patriotism and optimism. The next two examples of the same category built their rhetoric mainly on the wishful fall of the wall in, in Lefkosia, the capital of Cyprus, which is also known as the last divided capital in the world. In the first advertisement, words like prejudice, fear, racism, or misinformation are written on the bricks, whilst a hole on the wall accommodates the phrase, destroy the wall, and manages to get rid of some of these cultural barriers that prevent the unification of the city. Similarly, in the second advertisement, we actually see children collaborating to pass over the real wall, as well as a huge uppercase script casual title, Yes, Together We Can. This supports the action that is, a, is taking place in the image as well. While the fall of the wall can only be of an optimi optimistic scene again, we see children struggling for unification in a collective manner, portraying the notion of patriotism and family again. And in these last three advertisements that promote the positive response to the plan, we observe a series of interesting exemplars, some of them connoted through intertextual references with pre-existing verbal and non-verbal signs. Specifically, in the first case, the headline, Yes to the Solution, Let's Make a Start at Last, has intertextual notions of patriotism as it alludes to a 1977 song by the Cypriot national singer Anna Lisi titled Let's Make a Start Tonight. 
with a song which speaks to your solidarity about the never ending hope and who knows what tomorrow is going to bring and this every place of the world become our fatherland are some extracts from the lyrics that encourage unification and peaceful coexistence. Moreover, the young figures working in the advertisement are filled repeatedly with the word yes in lower and uppercase letters. This textual dress alongside their direction working from the left to the right side of the page create an implied optimistic path towards progress. A similar concept applies to the second advertisement too. Alluding to the graphic characteristics of road signs, an arrow within a circle points ahead and states in lowercase letters, stop looking back, the future is forward, yes to the solution. Looking ahead as if you could drive onwards is again a positive direction by voting yes to the suggested plan. And finally, while the main title in the third example states the truth about the Anand plan and projects a larger list of the things that we get with the things that we give, it incorporates an image of the occupied monastery of Apostol Varnavas, which is dedicated to the founder of Church of Cyprus. Such an image is aligned again to faith and religion, a cultural characteristic that we have already seen before. Okay, in this slide, we are summarizing the cultural exemplars as extracted by a semiotic analysis of the ad advertisements promoting to vote yes at the referendum. Similar findings have also been found in other research analysis we have conducted at the past. Some examples would include political campaign elections, Cypriot advertisements of internal and external tourist attraction or the advertisements that welcomed Europe when Cyprus joined the European Union in May 2004. While religion, patriotism and family are the classic mottos behind campaigns of drastic national and social changes, we often trace the concept of collectivity to accompany them. Moving on now to the advertisements that promoted the voting of no to the plan, we observe an interesting absence of images. While everything is based on negative textual conclusions from the plan, much of the persuasion depends on the semiotic power of typography. Particularly, the word you is either placed separately in uppercase letters on its own at the top left of the advertisement, or is implied in the common headings, will you vote, followed by a negative statement question underneath. Moreover, the word you is also emphasized with an underline in the subheadings, you decide, followed by an exclamation mark. Such an assignment of role playing to the viewer implies a personal responsibility, which can only be a burden, especially when linked with a negative statement. The specific linguistic rhetoric seems that aims to cultivate guilt to the viewers by stating various arguments such as our collective history will end, military troops will remain and will have the right to interfere, as well as foreign judges will take crucial decisions for important matters. While these arguments rely much on fear to convince the readers, some other statements depend on ambiguity. This ambiguity is quite evident in the rest of the examples we have here, whereby statements like a plan that does not guarantee the return of properties a plan that is based on good goodwill, or a plan with uncertain shares and economic infrastructure are some texts that cultivate this idea of ambiguity. Addressed in a collective manner by Cyprus United Votes, an oversized, bold and dynamic uppercase sans serif vote no to the Anand plan is always placed in a conclusive, emphasized style 
at the bottom of the advertisement. Similarly, in this slide, we are summarizing the cultural exemplars as extracted by a semiotic analysis of the advertisements promoting to vote no at the referendum. While they depend much on guilt, fear, and ambiguity, they rely much on the semiotic dimensions of typography to convince their readers. The absence of images is replaced by negative scenarios that still trigger emotions through their linguistic meaning. The effectiveness of an advertisement may rely on emotional or rational appeals. Emotional appeals in advertising have the capacity of catering to psychological, social, or symbolic desires that motivate the viewers to accept a particular perspective or take a certain action. Uh, it is suggested that images can reinforce these emotional appeals, either positive and negative. Also, in a, our discussion, we argue that, on the other hand, rational informational appeals cater to the viewer's need for seeking confirmation in safety, understanding the benefits of a situation and comprehending how it functions. Also, we know that M characteristics in anthropology investigates how local people construct meaning and explain things within their culture from an insider's perspective. The prevalence of such M concepts in the visual rhetoric of the advertisements reflect the importance and role of the local cultural features in the service of persuasion. A lot of uh, visual discourse coming to our conclusions in the yes advertisements is constructed with Islamic values of local cultural identity, such as religion, patriotism, family values, and collectivity. These major insight beliefs and attitudes are cultivated not only by the everyday practices and family, and family norms and tradition, but also by the Cypriot educational system. Furthermore, we have identified images that reinforce these emotional appeals as well as optimism in the rhetoric for the promotion of yes. Moreover, a lot of typographic parameters emphasize, contribute, and urge the need for a yes especially through type size and placement. On the other hand, in the no advertisements, we observe the absence of images. The rhetoric is only linguistic and, uh, and uses negative aspects of the plan, probably as de facto statements that might not need the support of images. On the other hand, the visualization of their arguments would require specialized effort and concern to avoid racist statements. Moreover, we have identified the advertising appeals of guilt and fear, which are common techniques used in social campaigns because of their nature to trigger negative emotions. In so doing, we also identify the exemplar of ambiguity, which seems to be another notion based on the information category. Again, a lot of typographic parameters emphasize, contribute, and urge the need for a no, especially through size placement and contrast. And finally, we see that the advertisements opposed to the plan seem to rely on a hybrid of rational informational appeals where they are initially presenting some statements deriving from the plan itself while at the same time, the statements are approached through the lens of emotions, such as fear, ambiguity, or guilt. And these are the major um, uh, conclusions we came up through our research. And we really thank you for your online attention and, and opportunity you gave us to share our findings and research with you. Thank you very much. Yeah, that was excellent. Thank you guys uh, for that very clear presentation and direct. Um, 
So everyone, you've just heard Dr. Evropides, Zantides, and Dr. Sonia Andreou, and I hope I'm saying that right, uh, presenting their master lecture on social change and the semiotics of the 2004 referendum advertisements in the Republic of Cyprus. Um, so if anybody has any questions to ask, uh, please go ahead. Are you willing to have some questions? Of course. <laughs> if anybody has questions, you can write them in the chat because uh, we do have 20 participants. Um, would you guys mind if I asked a question? Um, I noticed that you uh, looked at 2D advertising, which is the printed... Uh, I was wondering why you decided on that because, uh, uh, versus other advertising mediums like television or radio. Um, yeah, why did you pick 2D advertising to analyze? Sonia, if you want. Right. So, um, well, obviously, um, we uh, we were interested in selecting material that could be holistically studied, but this could happen also if if someone studied a video advert. Uh, the idea was that at the time we felt that these static adverts were far more influential in the population. For example, uh, you, would see, you would see them everywhere on the streets, you would see them uh, in the newspapers, which at the time they were still popular uh, newspapers, we are talking about 2004. Then they would also, the exact same, um, the exact same static adverts, they would appear as billboards. So uh, in a sense, they would be everywhere, and then the actual population would be um, would be taking some phrases from those particular adverts and printed adverts and use them for their own rallies. There were a few rallies for the uh, um, the ones that opposed the plan and the ones that uh, were for the plan, and they would use similar posters or even phrases taken from those posters. So we felt that these were, uh, let's say, kind of influential uh, in, the, um, uh, in the social context we studied. Great. This is true. This is true. And I, I agree with Sonia. It, it, the printed material was the, the corpus that yeah, that uh, allow the rest of the um, communication to begin. What we were uh, watching, what we were reading in the newspapers was appearing in the billboards. And uh, if I remember well, uh, some uh, radio, I'm not sure about television commercials. I'm not sure if, if they occurred to the extent that printed material was circulated. Um, more or less, the the, the concept, um, the structural rhetoric for these campaigns was um, was more evident in the printed material, and, and we felt that uh, it was more uh, representational to do so from this corpus. Excellent, and and that methodology you used of the semiotic analysis and that chart with the verbal and nonverbal and the denotative and connotative, um, the way that chart was designed, it works very well for 2D advertising. Uh, can that chart be applied to other mediums? Uh, and if so, would you use the chart the way it is or would you add other um, sort of uh, connotative mechanisms or other, uh, other categories in there? Yeah. Yeah, very, very nice um, observation and question, Carl. Indeed, this, uh, uh, this model has been developed to accommodate two printed material only. And a lot of that um, dimensions can be developed and other dimensions uh, should be elaborated so that uh, it becomes applicable for um, websites and, and moving images whereby um, there are other factors, other dimensions, and other parameters that, that, that come into the, um, to the concept of a semiotic alliances. For example, we, we should be introducing sound or um, 
music, sound or um, non-music, which is um, sound effects and um, other parameters like movement. It, it depends uh, what would be under examination. The parameters uh, can be developed and added to this model. It's, it's a model that um, it's an on, it, it, it accepts an ongoing development. Yeah. And depending on what you would like to see, you, you may um, uh, add, uh, add another, more elements. However, the things that exist there are very useful as well for anything that has um, text or anything that has an image um, could be seen from this uh, filtering to this, to this um, um, tool that we have developed. Great. Thank you very much for answering those questions. So uh, we have 21 participants here in the room. And I was just wondering if anybody else had um, a question for uh, our two uh, master lecturers. Um, if you do, you can write them in the chat or uh, please go ahead and ask the question. Yes, Hina, please. Yes. Um, hello. Thank you, Herodidis. Thank you, Sonia. It was uh, really very interesting. And um, I have like to ask um, uh, to ask you about uh, the possibilities of uh, typography. In your examples, Herodidis, do you think the impact of typography is a verbal impact on the reader? or it is a visual impact on the viewer, or both? Thank you, very interesting uh, semiotic question. Uh, as, uh, I would say it, it's a hybrid, the answer is a, it's a combination of these two. Uh, by, um, the, the, the two collaborate, the linguistic message, uh, enforces the, its visualization, and then typography comes to visualize the linguistic meaning and adds values and power to the way that it brings uh, visual forms to the concept that it, uh, it, it, it denotes through this linguistic uh, message. Therefore, I would say it's a combination that uh, if it occurs um, carefully, it can have a huge success because uh, um, it, there's a saying that um, uh, typefaces are, are the clothes that words wear. Therefore, um, a, a, a depending on the linguistic message, if you choose the right typefaces and all the other parameters that deal with typography, for example, size, placement, and color, and some other important features, then you can actually um, um, express a meaning in a much more effective and different way in, in terms of combining carefully the two um, of concepts of linguistic and typographic um, combination. And Sonia, if you want to add or collaborate on that, you're very yeah. welcome. Yeah, if I may, uh, the, I think the, uh, perhaps the most crucial and the, um, and let's say the, the, the aspect, the part of these uh, adverts that one could see what everybody was just saying is perhaps the most important um, part of these adverts, which is the idea of yes and no. I think this, this is the section where one can see even more highlighted this idea, this hybrid uh, idea of the meaning and the way that something is designed for the reader and for the viewer, since this is actually the most important thing that they would want to highlight. Okay, 
Dear, dear Carl, I think uh, Mohamed Malki have another question. Please, Mohamed. Mohamed, did you have a question? Yes. Uh, I would like to know, especially for uh, our students, uh, how this topic was chosen or mechanism of uh, choice? We, we chose this subject after, yes. uh, after yeah. we brainstorm, brainstorming around the thematic of the conference, uh, because we always try to uh, suggest and do research around something that the organizers would like to investigate. And uh, I, uh, since the topic that was given for the third conference was semiotics of social change, we felt like um, uh, uh, the most recent um, opportunity that um, a social change would do, take place in the Republic of Cyprus would be through this referendum. Therefore, we went back and see and, and saw what kind of uh, visual material was published. And, to, to, to research and analyze. Mainly the reason was to match the, um, the theme of the conference. And if I may elaborate on that, uh, it was not only, it was the fact that it was a rather recent event, taking into consideration it was 2004, but at the same time, it was quite an Im impactful event for the uh, society of Cyprus. So it was a combination of the fact that it's a recent attempted social change and then at the same time uh, something that really had a huge impact and one could say that it still has an impact on the society in question so both reasons great does that answer your question mohammed thanks yep excellent okay anybody else would like to ask our uh, two speakers today our master speakers any questions last chance and if there aren't any questions, Carl, can I just uh, thank everyone for their comments in the chat and also um, uh, remind about our conference. I, I was talking this with Nikolai and I thank him for very much for giving me this opportunity to share um, this slide with you because uh, people were asking us about uh, whether it's happening or not. Uh, at the moment, yes, we are um, uh, positive and we are optimistic that it's going to uh, take place physically in November, the fourth International Conference on Semiotics and Visual Communication on the subject of myths. Therefore, uh, we hope that um, everything will go well and probably we will meet again um, in, the, in, in the fall semester. Thank you very much. Thank you. Great. Thank you guys very much. Thank you. Thank you and very much. Thank you. We're closing our great uh, master uh, lecture from um, Evropides, Zantides, and Dr. Sonia Adiru. And, we're, and they presented their lecture on social change and semiotics of the 2004 referendum advertisements in the Republic of Cyprus. So thank you all very much for attending uh, this talk. And please check in the chat because um, there was an important message from uh, Nikolai regarding a keynote lecture from Massimo that had to be uh, moved to uh, later on today at six o'clock. So the links are in the chat. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, everybody. Thank you very much, everybody. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Don't forget about the Massimo Rescheder keynote lecture, please. Six o'clock. Thank you. Yes. Thank you very much. See you later.